Hello, welcome back to the final episode, uh, the bonus content for uh, painting the Celtic busts. So, if you were, uh, hopefully, you've been along with us this entire time. Um, I had painted these versions uh, prior to the paint along just to kind of get some of the colors set, get some of the techniques down, so I would know exactly what I was doing in the, the paint along. So, these were my original attempts. And then over the last couple weeks together, uh, we have painted these copies. Uh, very similar, some very small minor differences between the two of them. But they are done. We finished them in the previous session. But in this bonus content, uh, what we're going to do is, in the movie that these characters are from, uh, the characters sometimes wear face paint. And so what I'm going to do, even though it always makes me nervous to go and, and do something like this over a model that I've already painted, um, I am going to paint the face, do the face paint on uh, these two miniatures. So that is what one of the, mo the miniatures face paint looks like. Uh, this is kind of what the other one looks like. This one's a little bit harder. I, I can't find quite as good of a picture of this guy. Um, but it looks like he's basically got the blue kind of around his eyes. Uh, it goes down his nose, it goes um, down into his, his beard, uh, and then it's kind of like a weird uh, snake shape that goes up into his hair. So this is what we're going to work on. Uh, it shouldn't take us too long. This is not going to be a full two-hour uh, streaming session like I normally do. Now, in terms of, I may not get the exact color right on the, the face paint, we'll see. Um, but what I've decided to do is because the, the ties in his hair are colored using um, Cantabric blue, that's the tint on that, I'm actually going to use that as the base of the color for the face paint. I'm going to add white into it to lighten it up, but that's the color I'm going to use to do the face painting. And so let me pull up the reference picture. And if you kind of see how he's got like an outline of where the, the paint is, like a darker outline on there. Um, I'm going to start with that, well, You kind of see parts of his skin a little bit through the paint, so I don't really want to build up a bunch of layers on this. Uh, so I think I'm going to actually start with the, the primary color. So we'll do a little bit of testing, playing around until we get it to be about the right color. This is going to be way too dark. Not there yet. I should have started with the white and added the blue. Waste a little less paint that way. Or a lot less paint that way. When you're mixing up paint like this, um, and you're kind of trying to get the color right, or close to right. One thing you might consider doing is um, putting some on off to the side, like on a paper towel, which will dry pretty quickly on a paper towel, or um, you know, paint off and and, and let it uh, sit. I don't have quite a good spotlight on this, but. 
This will give you a more clear picture of what the paint's going to look like when it's dry as opposed to the, um, the wet color that's actually on your palette. Paint always looks different as it dries. And it tends to dry darker. I think that's because when it's wet, you get more reflection. It's a more reflective paint. And so the extra reflection makes it look a little lighter. is going to be good. All right, so whew, this is the, uh, the moment of truth. So I'm going to start on the left side of his face. I'm sorry, the right side of his face. What I'm looking at is the left um, because it just goes basically straight down his, his nose. The other design's a little trickier. So you see a little bit of his flesh along the hairline. So we will also do that. Falling away a little bit off to the side. When you're doing something like this, it's always better to err on the side of where the darker color is going to go. So as you're working on this line, put the line just a little bit towards the right side of the face, um, a little bit more than what you actually think you'll need, and then assess, and then go back and add a little bit more, because it's easy to fix this line if the error is towards the blue side, because you just keep painting over it and extending it. If the error goes over into the flesh color, that's a lot harder to correct. Because you have to repaint skin. It's been highlighted and shaded and glazed. Now, I can't quite see it on this side, but I mean, the paint goes right up to his ear. And in this model, the hair actually covers the ear. So we're just gonna go right up to the edge. Um, in terms of on his neck, it looks like it sort of, again, falls off to the side. This isn't exactly a, 
like straight on image of him. But I feel like maybe it's going to kind of come down to like here. Although I don't know, the, um, the other one kind of comes to meet it, so maybe it is more in the middle, and it's just because he's looking to the side that makes it look like that. So, eh, I'm just going to go straight down. And then it kind of goes up to where under his, where his ear would be. What's interesting is we're going to end up painting over his eyebrows as well. However, I'm going to save that step. I'm going to use a little bit lighter or a little bit thinner version of this blue to keep maintain a little bit of the brown from the from the eyebrows so that they are distinguished just slightly. The other thing is you'll see that he's got it's kind of flaking like it's like it's dried and it's flaking off a little bit um, I'm not gonna do that for this model it's a little trickier look to pull off you could always try to use real crackle paint but I, I um, as I've mentioned in the last couple streams, these busts are heading to Gen Con to be used as the painted models, painted versions of these models for sale, like to show people what they look like to try to sell the busts. So I really don't want to screw up at this point in time. and end up like ruining the whole thing. Keep it a little simpler. Now we got to do the other design that's a little trickier. We're going to go touch up some of that. Um, I know there's some, some thin spots. We'll fix those actually.
but the paint's still wet. All right, so this one starts over here. in towards his eye back out around his cheekbone There we have it. There's the, the outline at least of where the paint is going. All right, so for the other guy. First things first, I'll go under his eyes. Can't really tell if it goes above his eyes as well. But I'm just gonna stick to underneath, I think. Something like that. Oops, sorry, for painting off the screen.
can't quite tell if it's on his mustache as well. But I'm going to go ahead and put some there. Figure if he's going to do his beard, he'll probably do his mustache too. And then down the center of his nose. like a snake up to say here now one thing if you're if you're not super confident in your free hand your ability to get the brush to go where you want it to as you're tracing out paths like that. What I encourage you to do is to place some strategic dots in like for this case it would be in the blue color. Where along basically where the path is going to go and you can just sort of keep expanding the dots in size a little bit until they're roughly like they follow the trajectory and they're almost like solid and then you can just paint over the whole thing that kind of goes along the that path. Um, you want to keep your paint very thin if you're doing that because otherwise all the dots you paint are going to dry with enough um, like depth texture to them that when you then paint over them you're going to actually see a bunch of little dots. But if you keep your paint pretty thin even if you do a thinner version of your paint just for the dots and then use a slightly thicker version to then go and um, cover up those dots, do the outline, that would be fine. I do that a lot when I'm doing like complicated tattoos that go around like curved surfaces and things. I will oftentimes do those guiding dots to kind of help me place everything. So I don't screw up because a lot of times you're doing that kind of detail work or this kind of face painting stuff over top of something you've spent a long time carefully painting and you really don't want to mess up. It's kind of like when you're building stuff. You know, the uh, measure twice, cut once kind of mantra. It's kind of like that idea.
bit of this, water it down. Go over his eyebrows. I'll do that a couple times. But um, we have the basic shape. And again, if you're happy at this point, um, you can feel free to stop. You don't have to go beyond what you're happy with. You should always stop the painting when you're still happy with it. Um, unless you're really experimenting and trying new things, in which case, go to town. So I'm going to take some of this. I don't want to add the darker color right back into what I've got here because I want to keep this ready for any cleanup that I need to do, any touch-ups if uh, something happens and I need to touch some stuff up. I, would, I don't want to lose my mix. Sorry, I've been painting all morning. My shoulders and neck is all oh, tight. All right. Now, as I said before, I should have um, I should have gone the other way. I would have wasted less paint. Starting with white, started to add the, the darker blue in. Um, when you add the darker blue, the color changes very, very quickly. When you add the darker color to the lighter color, the opposite way tends to be a little more um, you have to add a little bit more of the white paint to start, or light, lighter paint to make a bigger difference. So, especially when I'm adding dark to light, I like to do it a little bit at a time. Um, because the color can end up changing really quickly on you. So what I'm doing here is I've added a little bit of the dark blue back to the mix to start darkening the paint. But I'm making a very making a thin glaze or shade color here. Because I'm going to start to do the shadows where the, the blue would be just a little bit lighter. I mean sorry, a little bit darker. Uh, I think I need a little bit. I'm going to start to pull that darker color into the shadows. So towards the edge of his face, under his eyes, towards the, the nose.
we're going to go back and forth. So we're going to do a few passes of this. It's a little trickier on Hamish with his. It's got smaller areas to work with. Sorry if the table's shaking a little bit. There's a cat moving around doing cat things on the other end of the table. I don't want to totally change everything about the color because I was pretty happy with how color we were getting but you want just enough variation here down into the shaded regions so that we get a little visual interest and it doesn't look so flat
So finally, I'm going to do the line. He's got a slight, slightly darker line that kind of outlines the, the shape down his face. Um, I need a slightly thicker consistency than what I was just using. really see it so much on the other guy. I'm not sure if he has the same dark line. I think it's mostly on the inside. Just kind of trace it off to the side. There you have it. One little touch up.
So that concludes the bonus content for our Celtic bust paint along, which means that we are totally done. Now, if you're watching this and you don't have the busts yet, you can go to my website, www.gorillawithabrush.com. There's a tab that says Celtic busts. Um, depending on when you watch this, hopefully there are still some available. They were only uh, 90 of each that were ever produced. Um, but if there are still available, you want to purchase one, go through the paint along, all of the videos are archived. Um, you can uh, learn how to achieve this same effect on your own model. Every step, every brush stroke, uh, I didn't hide anything. Um, anyway, it's been a pleasure to do this with you. I hope you learned something. I certainly had an enjoyable time. Thanks to everyone who showed up on the various streams where these were recorded. Uh, thanks for keeping company, keeping me entertained while I painted. Um, it's been uh, it's been really fun. So um, we're gonna probably uh, the next streams that we do. Um, I might do another one or two streams with Atlantis Miniatures Dwarves after this. Um, otherwise, um, I know that some blacksmith miniatures I was showing those off in a previous stream. They are like leprechauns and things like that. Um, I, I do want to pick one of those models for an upcoming uh, set of streams and again paint that model from start to finish all on stream. Um, so stay tuned for that. But again, thanks for joining me. Hope you had a good time. I hope you learned something. Until next time, take care.